It's a pleasure and an honor to be with all of you today. And it's an exciting evening because we have an opportunity to talk about two wonderful things, the shaman and also the plant kingdom. Both are very, very beautiful worlds. So I'm, first of all, very, very happy to be here. I thank the Theosophical Society for hosting this wonderful lecture and also for that wonderful introduction that John just did for me. Thank you very much. And we have an extra wonderful opportunity to share with you an elder from the Apache Nation, Mama Little Wolf. She's going to launch this wonderful lecture with a very special blessing. She's with us on Fridays uh, at our, our MSI Center in Evanston. And at the free meditation, she sends a blessing out to everyone. So I'm going to have her um, you know, say the blessing for us so we can have an absolutely wonderful opportunity to share that beautiful energy. And I always say that when elders are around, it's a wonderful medicine because they have an opportunity to share so much with us. So I want to welcome you and I'm going to um, have Mama Little Wolf uh, give us a beautiful blessing for this wonderful lecture. Thank you so much for being and I give my blessings to all of you with all my heart. My blessings to all of you and your family too. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mama Little Wolf. Many blessings to you for being here, and thank you very much for your beautiful energy. Many blessings. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank that wonderful blessing that we just received from Mama Little Wolf, and she is an Apache elder. So I welcome you to this wonderful lecture, and this lecture is about the plant kingdom and the shaman. So my name is Billy Topatate, and I am Mescalero Apache. I'm going to really introduce a, a, a word, uh, an Apache word called Dagote. Dagote means it's so good to see you, and it's such a pleasure and an honor to be with you today. And this is uh, the Plant Kingdom and Shaman uh, PowerPoint. And this is a little bit about me. I'm the founder of MSI Wellness Center. We're an earth-friendly uh, wellness center. I'm Mescalero Apache, and we're dedicated to creating a sacred space, one person at a time. That's our vision for MSI through the indigenous wellness, uh, indigenous uh, native wisdom of my teachers. And I've been so fortunate to have some wonderful teachers in my life. The greatest sense of place is in the center of nature. The medicine woman or medicine man brings, begins by bringing the energy of sacred intention and the creator's spirit respectfully and with honor. When we close our eyes, we are in the spirit world with all the other kingdoms the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the kingdom of the water, the kingdom of the clouds, the, the green nation, which is called uh, the trees, the, the, the plants. The plants give us and gift us with food for nutrition, for medicine, for healing, and blessing energy for ceremony, such as our smudging ceremony. They are all extended family. We call them Toyoshpaye. When we move away from nature, we move away from our heart and spirit and start to forget our true connection with the integrity of our great purpose. Harvesting for us in nature is like singing to our soul. We begin to remember something very ancient when we're in nature. And then the kingship with the plants begins. So I highly recommend that we spend as much time in nature 
And as my teacher would say, sukur unto nature and nature sukurs unto you. And it's a wonderful experience because it brings us back to a place where we can remember what is important to us. The shaman works with the natural world. There is healing in the world of nature. And when we acknowledge this healing energy, we become, or it becomes medicine for our mind, body, and spirit. You will notice in this particular photograph that there is a medicine man and he's elevating himself. The photograph is the symbol of a medicine woman or medicine man striving to elevate. Each person is like the butterfly in nature, transforming itself in various stages of maturity. In order for us to speak to the creator and also to the plants and the animals, we must elevate our consciousness and our conversations and our words. Everything has vibration and the words we use allow us to elevate our consciousness to create a landscape of information and also connections. Indigenous people were given the knowledge of the plants and the plant spirits by the creator to foster a stewardship with plants and the rest of the natural world. It was our job to continue to learn more, thus deepen our connection and to spread the wisdom to others and do the same. So it goes on and on and on, the circle of life. The shaman learns the advanced teachings of what my elders call enlightened language. This language is used to speak to spirit, to the creator, and to our virtuous teachers in spirit, to the plants, the plant medicine spirit, as well as all the other kingdoms, such as the spirit of the wind, the tree nation, the animals, and so much more. When I talk about enlightened language, it is a vibrational state of being. When we speak to the creator or our helpers, we speak spirit to spirit. When we talk to the plants, we speak spirit to spirit. When we talk to the trees, we speak spirit to spirit. When we talk to the clouds and the weather and our helpers, we are speaking spirit to spirit. What does that mean? You notice that when I talk about speaking spirit to spirit, that I'm touching the center of my heart. We do that automatically when we see someone that we care about. We touch our heart. This is a very powerful center that allows for the vibration of our consciousness and our energy field to connect with someone or something in a way that is higher than our personalities. The Green Nation. Might it be interesting and worthwhile to consider, even though we cannot survive without plants, we often just use them and do not try to create a kinship with them. Plants have living spirit. They hold a key gift for us. They provide not only food for us, they provide medicine for us. They also provide spiritual tools for us, such as the Native American smudging ceremony. My grandfather used to say, when nothing is sacred, almost anything can go wrong. We call the trees and the plants the green nation. Trees also have living spirit and we are, and they are the lungs of the world as well as our lungs. We cannot survive without them. 
The interesting thing to contemplate is even though we cannot live without them, the plant kingdom can most certainly live without us. They can live independently of the human nation. However, they are still forever extending their hand out to us, trying to be of service to us, but why? We say that gifts multiply in relationships. One of my teachers said that life is all about relationships. The relationship we have with others, with plants, with animals, with the environment, such as the water and the clouds, the sun, and even crystals. There are many reasons why the plant kingdom helps us, but for one, but one I can mention within this lecture is that the plants, trees, and herbs are all healing medicine for us in so many ways. They're, they are hoping that each time they extend their hand out to help us, that one day soon we will wake up and realize they are part of our family. And then we can speak to them. They are our relatives, Toyoshpaye. They have so much wisdom and more wisdom to share with us, and the plants reach out their hands continuously in hopes we will create a kingship with them. One key element is the commitment we made with them many, many lifetimes ago. The plant kingdom asked to be used with honor and respect, therefore healing medicine would profoundly occur. And it's very interesting, you know, when I work with my clients and I talk about the plant spirit medicine, you know, plants have a beautiful spirit and they also have a higher spirit that guides them, you know, to direct them um, to make more of the medicine that they have and also clean the earth. So when a shaman works with plants, the plant medicine, it's really a, a, a cooperation and a teaching experience. They teach us a lot about what they do in relationship to the situation that is presented to them. And it's a really wonderful experience to learn from plants and plant spirit medicine. They have so much to share with us and they're so eager to teach. When we speak to them, we speak to them spirit to spirit, as if we are spirit, which we are, and they are spirit, which they are. And we speak that way, we're going to hear them very clearly. Sharing ceremony and knowledge deepens our wisdom and connection with the Creator. This is Monique Lildahl, uh, my daughter. She's, uh, in these two pictures, She's working with the water spirits. The water spirits help us to cleanse and to teach us how to navigate our life. If you notice, nature gives us these symbols and these wonderful teachings on how to live. When you look at a beautiful river that's very healthy, it flows with all this vitality and strength and even peace. And there are these wonderful whirlpools that happen in a healthy river. One whirlpool will extract toxins. The other one will extract plastics and, and, uh, and other organisms that are not, should not be present in the water. And then another whirlpool will be um, gathering and dispersing minerals that help the water to be clean. That the water that we drink today has been on this planet since its inception. And it's, it's an absolute miracle just to watch that water travels time and space. It goes into the earth, Mother Earth cleans it, even the sun cleans the water and it, as it lifts itself up when the waves are lifting the bacteria to cleanse the water. And it goes up to the clouds and the clouds surround them, 
nurture them, provide them with an element of the creator. And it comes back into this beautiful circle of life and becomes clean again. That's a miracle. But it happens every moment. And we have an opportunity to sustain and vivify ourselves with this wonderful water we call sacred water. We believe water is one of the 12 sacred foods on the planet. And so is uh, salt. Salt is another sacred food on the planet. And it's wonderful because it provides us with nutrients, cleansing, and so much more. So when we work with our native ceremonies, we work with these beautiful uh, worlds, the world of the water um, and also the plants. And when we do these beautiful ceremonies, we're honoring them, we're respecting them, we're wanting to learn more about them, and also using them um, in, our, in our smudging ceremonies, uh, but also as, as a nutrient and, and a plant to um, help us when we need um, cleansing. So the ceremonies are really about our beautiful intention to create a landscape of, of energy that will open beautiful doors um, for energy to flow th through these beautiful plants to us. And there's uh, another picture of Monique Lildal, and she is um, doing what is called a basket blessing of, of herbs so that we can give them out as gifts. And because, you know, even if we were take, to take a plant, send a wonderful um, salutation to the plant by saying hello, and then just using the, the fragrance of the plant and taking a nice deep breath in, all that medicine comes into our energy field and we sleep so much better. Our thoughts are elevated and we release ourselves from the bondage of stress. So the basket ceremony is, is really wonderful and the ceremony of the water spirits is also very wonderful where we can connect with that beautiful essence and enjoy the beautiful energy that can come from that. So I highly encourage you to engage uh, like you're engaging with another spirit. Our minds and living spaces are very much like our energy field. It thrives when it is in a state of sacred balance. When you speak to the universe with your heart, you will not only be heard, but you will also be answered. Our ceremonies do this for us. When we do our sweat lodge, we know that our prayers are not only going to be heard, but they will be answered. Because we have this knowing and this feeling, and also we are connecting with the uh, energy and the uh, spirits that will hear our prayers in the ceremony. The first energy tool to use is to um, become patient, you know, have patience, respect, and a willingness to learn. What happens in our energy field when we have this patience and respect and willingness to learn is it starts to adjust itself and create what is called a permeability factor. The permeability factor allows us to absorb more energy. For example, when I'm in the energy world looking out at things that I see. I'm not only seeing those particular things, but all the information that's connected to it. And that's what happens with our energy field when we have patience, respect, and a willingness to learn. Learn how the universe works with a teacher who walks with nature. A teacher who respects and interacts with nature is a teacher that understands the universe. A sacred sanctuary is the great spirit's way of reminding us there is heaven on earth. Take time to create one and use it daily. And what that means is we need to take time to create a sacred time for ourselves every day. For me, I have been doing this for a long time, 
So every moment is a sacred moment for me. Even when things are, are you know, surprises or things go awry, these are still sacred moments, things that we can learn from. We also talk about sacred sanctuary, and that means just creating a place where you can go and know that you can be heard by your higher self, your guides, and the creator. Develop your thoughts to be like medicine for you and others. Sending a loving thought to someone is like sending angels to help from far away. So when we send a thought to someone and we're asking for something good for them, we're actually sending a wonderful angel to help them. This is a drum blessing uh, picture, which is we were on top of a mountain. Um, in this ceremony, we raise our drums so they can be blessed by the creator, the wind spirits, and our personal spirit guides. You know, when we come into this world, we are blessed by the medicine people, medicine woman, medicine man, and they let us know that we have a personal uh, spirit guide, a spirit helper that will help us throughout the times of our life. And that is a wonderful thing. We all have a very special personal spirit helper that helps us. We were on a mountain and the wind was so strong and the trees were bending towards our drums. It was absolutely amazing demonstration. We, we raise our drums up to the sky in this ceremony. And when we do that, we're asking for our drums to be blessed by the creator, by the wind spirits, by the healing energies, so that when we use our drums, we use them as energy tools for healing and a focused intention on sending that energy wherever we're thinking about or, or wanting energy healing to go. Native ceremony is not just a technique, it is a state of mind that opens the doorway to a part of our consciousness that brings wisdom and healing. And when we were holding up the drums to have them blessed, you could feel the energy flowing through them. It's amazing, it's a vivifying experience. And the wind was so strong, it was moving the, the uh, trees to bless our, our, our drums, it was very inspiring. The shaman. The shaman walks in, in this world and many realms of energy and energy worlds. Also, the shaman learns from viewing how things are healed in the energy world and wisdom that is unknown to bring it into this world. In the energy world, there are many, many platforms. But the wonderful thing is when you see things in the energy world that are new, new to you, you can actually bring that wonderful wisdom into the earth to help. And that happens in so many different ways. Something called dispersing in the light is one of the stories that I would like to share with you. There was a time when I was with my teacher in the energy world with another, another girl I did not know but was a student of my, my teacher. We were walking the energy world and from a great distance we saw like a campfire a beautiful fire, and there were people around it. So I walked towards that fire, and I noticed that these beautiful beings that were sitting around the fire were taking things from their aura that were congested and throwing it into the light. Because it wasn't a fire, it was a very bright light. I looked at this and I watched and I also not only watched, because in the spirit world, when you have a focused intention of learning, you receive more information than just what you're viewing. And what came to me was 
that these beautiful teachers that were surrounding this beautiful light were taking their karmas and constrictive obstacles and dispersing them into the light. And what I heard them say was, I brought you forth imperfectly in this lifetime. And I disperse in the light that belief that I see as an obstacle. And when they moved it into the light, it dispersed and their aura became brighter and cleaner. And I looked to the girl next to me and said, I would love to bring that technique into the earth. And she said, I would too. So I spoke to my teacher and I said, I would like to sit here and understand what they're doing so I can bring it into the world. And so we sat and we observed and and then I felt it was time for us to come back into this world. When I did, I wrote everything down and I decided to write about what I called dispersing in the light. And what happened to the other girl? The other girl took it to her place where she was working with recovering uh, addicts and, and people who needed to release traumas. And she used this dispersing in the light for that platform. So it was really wonderful that we were actually able to see this and to bring it into the earth in two different platforms, but both very strong and very powerful. So the dispersing of the light is something that we can do because when the light is bright, we can disperse anything in it just like the sun. The shaman learns how to connect with the plants by speaking the universal language of all living systems and understanding that all living systems have living spirit. When I talk to the plants, and it's really wonderful because we have so many plants in our courtyard at, at the MSI uh, center, they all say hello to me. And, um, you know, and also we have plants on the outside of, of, you know, that are in the neighborhood. And they all love to be acknowledged. They all love to, to, uh, to, to say hello and to talk about their medicine. And, you know, I always, when I'm working with, with a student and they're talking about a difficulty, I say, let me see what the plant medicine spirits say and which one wants to come forward and to be of service to you, to help. And so, you know, when you're talking to uh, other spirits, we need to know that that is possible and also that we speak spirit to spirit that we know that we are spirit and they are spirit. Might it not be also worthwhile to consider our relationship with plants as it stands today and what it might look like when we understand their mystical meaning? Be patient and talk with sincere qualities and express your needs to the plant what I do, even when I'm drinking tea, herbal tea, and I'm very specific about the herbal teas that I drink, I always talk to them. I always say, this is today, I honor and respect you, and I interact with you, and I would like very much for you to help me with this, this, and this. And then I drink it. So you're really having a much more deeper connection with the plant, whether it's in a tea, a capsule, or in the garden. The shaman talks with the plants, sings to the plants, asks for their wisdom, and learns how to prepare them. And I'm going to talk about something called the Apache water infusions and why they were created. So I talked about when we harvest, it's like singing to our soul. And learning how to harvest is so very important, you know, talking to the plant and telling the plant what you're gonna be using it for 
And so the plant can give more medicine and the spirit of the plant can bless what you're doing. There is a particular song that I really enjoy singing when I am interacting with plants and harvesting and also making the medicine, as you can see. This is Lemon Balm from my mother, Mama Little Wolf's uh, garden. She has an organic garden. And making the medicine, um, you know, opening up the medicine of the plant so that it can give its medicine to, you know, whatever you're working with, whether it's a salve or um, essential oils or any of that nature. So the plant that's in my hand there, there's an interesting story. Um, I asked my mother if I could harvest the plant from her garden so I could make lemon balm um, salve, which I love to do. Um, and so I harvest, I spoke to the plant, sang the plant, which by the way, I'm going to give you that song today. And I told the plant that I would not be able to make the medicine for four days. So if she, if, if the plant could keep its freshness and not dry up for four days, I would greatly appreciate it because I was waiting for the containers to be mailed. So the plant said, I would be honored to be the medicine for you and whoever you give it to. Um, and I will stay fresh for four days. So on the fourth day, well, actually the third day, the, the, the containers came and the plant was still so fresh and so filled with life. And so it was very, very interesting. Um, and I'll tell you another story in a minute, um, but after we use every part of the plant. So we use the leaves for the medicine of, for the digestive system or for um, rashes and things. In this particular situation, I was uh, making uh, a lemon balm uh, salve, and which I love to use because you can put that on the bottom of your, of your feet before you go to sleep. It lifts your spirit and it also helps you sleep very, very well. Um, and I would use the, the remainder of the branch to make the smudge sticks. So you'll see on, on, the, on the picture next to it that we bind them for smudging. So there's a lemon balm um, smudge stick and then there's a sage sm smudge stick and then there's cedar. So we use everything because we honor the plant that way. The, the other story about the lemon balm is um, when I made the um, lemon balm uh, salve, uh, one of uh, our, our students said, oh, we have lemon balm in our, in our backyard and I, and I would love to give you some. And I, I was honored to do that, uh, to accept. So she harvested it and then dropped it off on a Friday, and, which I thanked her very much for. And I came back Saturday to pick up the, the lemon balm she harvested the night before, and it was all dry and shriveled up. And I was very surprised. And I took it home and I was washing it and I said, what happened? Why did you get all dry right away? And the plant said, they took me from my place and they didn't tell me where I was going. And I said, well, I'm sorry, you know, but you are going to be used as medicine to heal so many people. So the medicine came after the spirit of the plant realized that, yes, she took you from your place and I'm so sorry she didn't tell you where you were going. Um, many people don't, don't understand that they can talk to you. Um, so it was very interesting, a great validation of what the plant can do when you're asking uh, the plant um, to help you. And I'm going to talk about the uh, Apache water infusions as well because they're very wonderful, easy to do. Uh, but before I do that, um, when we harvest, we sing to them. And I'm going to sing this song for you um, so that you can use the song when you're harvesting. This song comes from a wonderful friend. His name is Adam Yellowbird. And he uh, sings wonderful songs, and uh, he's uh, you know, a good friend of mine. And I really love the song so much. And when I did a meditation, the song said, sing the song when you're harvesting the plants. 
because it's a happy, wonderful song. And when you're singing the song, you want to send um, pictures of what you're going to be doing with the plant, whether it's for smudging or for medicine. So I'm going to sing the song for you right now. Wehaya, wedo, wedo do wedo haedo. Wehaya, wedo wedo po wedo wehaya. Wedo do wedo wehaya. Wedo do wedo wehaya. Weda po wedo wehaya. Weda po wedo wehaya. Wehaya, wedo. Wedo do wedo haedo. Wehaya, wedo weda po wedo wehaya. Wedo do wedo wehaya. Hey hey, wedo do wedo wehaya. Weda po wedo wehaya. Weda po wedo wehaya. That's my gift to you. And when you sing the song, to the plants, they will be happy. Let's talk about the Apache water infusions. Many, many moons ago, when we travel in different regions of the land, we would ask the plants which ones would help us with medicines and things of that nature. And we had elders with us. They were like in their 90s and hundreds. They lived for a long time. But some of them would experience digestive absorption problems when they got older and couldn't digest their food. And we sat with the plants and we asked them, how can we help them heal their digestive system? And they gave us a beautiful a story and a method by which to heal them, which I use to this very day. And how they would help us is, they said that water is very important for the body, hydration. And medicine is very, very important for the body to create vitality and space. When we create space in the body, we create opportunities for circulation and healing. And we call the uh, digestive system the terrain, the terrain that absorbs provides nutrients. So what we would do is we would take one plant and we would put it in clean water and place it in the sun for a few moments. And then we would sing a song to the plant to release the medicine into the water. We would take the plant out and give the elder the water because the water had all of the nutrient, nutrients in it already and would hydrate the organs and give them the medicine that they would need. But the plants also said this. They said, one plant per, per water because they said it was important to allow for that plant to be absorbed in all the organs. They also said that when you drink one water infusion, you wait for 30 minutes because all of the warriors, and they called all the organs warriors, they said, let them drink and take what they need and give it to the next warrior. The pancreas gives it to the, the liver, the liver gives it to the kidneys, and they all say, I had my fair share, I'll save, I'll save the rest for you. And that takes about 30 minutes. And after that, another water infusion. So three to four water infusions until the elder's digestive system started to heal and they started to become more vivified and, and more filled with vitality. And then we could mix the herbs and put them into a, what's called a suspension of, of a mix. So something very simple. Now, 
you know, you know we're not in, in teepees anymore, we're in homes and things of that nature. So we, we, we converted that traditional platform of Apache water infusions into something that was very simple to do for our, um, our, our, our neighbors and our families. So what we would do is we would take, um, let's for example, a cucumber and we would peel it and then cut it up and pray, you know, ask for it to provide us with all the healing, place it in the blender with some beautiful spring water and let it blend and then take a strainer and pour it through the strainer, throw the fiber away and this is your medicine water. And you want to drink that and allow for all of that to go into all the organs, nourish the organs, bring them back to vitality and allow for the digestive system, the terrain to heal. So, you know, cucumber water is, is, is wonderful, but also, you know, spinach water and celery water, the water with the plant and the intention that you place in it and the expressed desire of connecting with the spirit of the plant actually helps to heal the body so wonderfully and creates a beautiful um, opportunity for the organs to refresh themselves and also to heal themselves. And interesting that the plants called all the organs warriors. The plants told me that not only are all of the organs warriors, there are stories that they share. For example, they said that the mother, when she is having a child in the womb, that the liver of the mother speaks to the liver of the child as the child develops in the womb. And the liver says to the child's liver, you will work earnestly and wonderfully and with great determination, even though you will not be acknowledged because they do not know that you are working on their behalf. So it tells the liver of the child, do not stop, always do what is best and what is good and be determined. So I want you to know that all the organs are these beautiful warriors that help you. Um, and there are some wonderful stories about all of that as well. This is a photograph that was taken after we were coming down from the mountains and our spirit helpers were saying goodbye. And coming down from the mountain after ceremony, looking back and seeing our ancestors say goodbye. And it is a very powerful thing for us because you know we know that um, our spirit helpers are always with us. But this photograph was a great verification that they are present and they live in the light, in this beautiful, powerful light. And what I wanted to also say is, when we talk about enlightened language, we say that we speak, speak with respect and honor, but also accountability. Accountability that we do not know everything, but we strive to know and we would like to know. And we also state specifically what we're wanting to learn about our life. We know that every event in our life uh, provides us with a great opportunity to grow. However, it is an opportunity to extract wisdom about what we don't know. So have patience and take time with the learning process. This is Mama Little Wolf and my, myself. We we're, we're gonna climb the mountain so we can do some wonderful ceremonies. And uh, we, um, we, we always say to the students, it, when you help the natural world, the natural world will help you. Um, and also to enjoy meditation with nature. It's very important. You know, you don't know the plant world until you start to sit there and meditate and really slow down and see the world, not the way you perceive it to be, but what they want to show you. I remember when I did meditation when I was very young and I sat next to these wonderful plants and I started to realize that they were very vivified in their, in their, um, in their 
uh, presence, and also they had a lot to share. Um, Pick and connect with a plant and take time to receive wonderful information. You know, just as my teacher would say, you know, pick one or two plants that you want to get to know. You know, don't, don't try to take on so much information and get nothing. Um, you can connect with lavender or you can connect with lemon balm or one of the four sacreds, the cedar, the sweet grass, the smudge, uh, you know, the the uh, tobacco, which we call kanikanik, um, or any of the, just pick one or two and really connect with them in such a good way. This is, um, th these are a couple of my books. Um, this, the book, The Smudging Ceremony, um, The Apache Guide to not only the smudging ceremony, but how we harvest uh, plants how we use them, uh, why we use them, why the Creator provided us with all the uh, connections in, in that way, and, and so much more. So the Smudging uh, Ceremony book is a wonderful book. You can find it on Amazon, or you can um, purchase it from our website. I wrote the book because I didn't see a lot of information on the internet about why we were given this wonderful information and I really felt it was very important to share a lot of the information that isn't present um, it, as I saw on, on the internet. And then uh, there is a book that I wrote called the Reiki Heart Blessing Training Book and you don't have to be a Reiki person to to, uh, to learn from the book. It's, it's got some wonderful information on how to send blessings to people, um, to ourselves, to spaces. Um, and it's just, a, it's a wonderful book. The Book of Sacred Wisdom, The Writings of a Medicine Woman, is a book that I, I wrote that has a lot of information about of the elders and how they used sacred uh, language of light, which we call energetic narratives. And we use those to work with our virtuous teachers and spirit, and we learn qualities of healing through that process. So I wanna thank you so very much for being with me. It's a pleasure and an honor to speak with you and have an absolutely wonderful and magical uh, journey. Thank you so much. <laughs>